So without further ado, let me get started with the uh, conceptual questions of which I already see two submissions. Um, I guess that's uh, tomorrow, so maybe that's not so early. And I'll ask the questions here. And I thought I got some of the questions from Portable TA or, sorry, I'm mixing them up with the, the, the pre-lab question you had for the lab, which is all tying together for what we are doing here. So let me ask these questions of perplexity and I'll critique its answers and then move on. So, um, it'll probably answer that question well. Uh, perplexity tends to, or, you know, chat GPT tends to do well with uh, definition questions, uh, especially when it's a standard terminology like internal resistance. So, I have no doubt it'll answer well. Uh, internal resistance. I don't think, uh, who uses the acronym IR for that? That's so confusing with the infrared. The, I would never use that as an acronym. Uh, with the, uh, main components, electric, ionic resistance. Okay, that's more. Now, by the way, if you mention ionic resistance in your answer, I know that didn't come from what we talk about in class. Um, uh, it, that is way too much detail. Um, for analysis, yeah. So that's the key part. Yeah, total effective resistance. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, second paragraph is great. That's really all it needs, and the rest is really um, high effect operation of a battery and. Okay, realistic analysis of circuit containing battery. Um, in terms of circuit analysis, low voltage drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the uh, the detail that uh, is consistent with all, uh, what we cover and what you should mention. And then um, all these additional details. It is a little too long, um, but it's fine. Uh, that's kind of what it normally does. Um, and if that long answer, as you're reading through, helps you learn, then that's great. Um, for me right now, in the interest of time, let me move on and not critique those extra paragraphs. Um, so I'm in a little bit of a hurry um, uh, because, again, I want to be able to go through the electrostatics, the time assessment during the time we have here. series and then parallel um, say if it yeah it's uh, almost uh, a bit simplistic and um, uh, it's because I want you to mention some uh, kind of mental math tricks uh, or how to analyze a circuit just staring at it without having to do a, a detailed analysis of each uh, module or component now um, they'll give you these formulas right you have those register addition formulas fine if you know it but the key thing that you i want you to get out of that is what it does mention you know when you're adding registers in series the equivalent resistance is greater than either of those two regis resistances so or to put it another way the equivalent resistance of a series combination will be greater than the the greater of the two. Um, so if you are adding a 10 ohm and 100 ohm, without doing any math, you know the uh, equivalent resistance is greater than 100 ohm. With a parallel configuration, it kind of goes the opposite. So you are adding them in reciprocals, and, um, and the result of that is that the equivalent resistance will be smaller than either of those two. You can prove that mathematically if you want. So in the same example of adding a 100 ohm and 10 ohm register, without doing any math, you know the, if you are adding them in parallel, you know the equivalent resistance is less than 10 ohm. And yeah, they've gotten that. Um, <laughs> that um, this is a good answer. It's mentioning all the key things that it should mention. Um, and I don't think I've asked her for this. Um, although this uh, special circumstance, it's uh, useful in kind of thinking through uh, input impedance of a uh, instrument uh, that we might you might get to see mentioned uh, when we do more circuit stuff, especially with the time dependent circuits. Uh, last three laps of this semester are dedicated to circuits, so I hope you have fun with those laps and. 
get to see some of the things that uh, you can really only see with oscilloscope. That's the one thing in circuit that not a lot of people have at home. Like DMMs, the digital multimeter that we are we are using in lab is so cheap that you could buy your own. But oscilloscopes, even the cheapest one, will still cost like a couple hundred dollars. So. Yeah, and I think there should be some way this will work because this has some uh, accessibility feature. So when I paste it, the yeah accessibility feature has copied it uh, in the the word description of this figure. I'll just uh, read it through briefly to know. Uh, circuits on below the figure shows. Yeah, I think that's all the correct description. The figure comes from OpenStax textbook, so the description is also. Just copy the from open text description that um, registers. Nope. Um, uh, the the um, the nice nice thing about open text textbooks is because they are well supported. Um, they uh, do things like ADA compliance, <laughs> or like uh, something that someone might have written just on their own individually. So okay. So does it require application of rules? No. Uh, so the without the, yeah because you can just add the registers in series parallel and so um, step by step guide okay uh may series and parallel registers so R four and the series combination of R three and five in parallel with each other in this in series is R two in parallel wow that is correct uh, so yeah, simplify the series register, simplify the parallel. I don't think it's missing any of these steps. I mean, you know, so it's not writing down equations, but uh, I am impressed with this one because it's yeah giving all the steps correctly. And in fact, even if it's even labeling the registers the way I would, you know, and in fact, um, I think you might see in the model answer how these are labeled. Um, yeah, that, uh, this is great answer. Um, um, yeah, and uh, it didn't do the optional thing of giving total equivalent resistance. What sources are we? It might be drawing from some. Um, so I guess there's uh, some circuit. There's Khan Academy thing and circuit handout. Maybe the circuit handout actually works through this particular circuit. No, not this particular circuit. So I'm not quite sure. Um, oh, I mean, um, uh, this is great answer. <laughs> now, if uh, someone's giving a verbatim answer of that, then you know that's not so great because that means your cutting corners are not using this to learn. But uh, that's a good answer. Um, all right, the next question. Um, yeah, I, I think I briefly mentioned this in lab um, about ideal ammeter and ideal voltmeter. Um, and it'll probably answer this well. These are kind of standard questions. Um, yeah, yeah, already did that. Oh, wait, you got rid of the digital and analog stuff. Okay, B, uh, how they are connected in circuit. Uh, a voltmeter is connected in parallel, that's right. Uh, ammeter is connected in series, right. Uh, so that the current has to go through the ammeter. Uh, yeah, in series F, that's good. Um, ideal internal resistances are, yeah, designed to minimize their impact. So voltmeter has infinite internal resistance, okay. Ideal ammeter is zero internal, yeah, that's all good, yeah. Uh, very small but non-zero, yeah. Will have very high but finite. So when you're using oscilloscope as voltmeter, it'll have a uh, standard uh, uh, resistance of a mega ohm. So, um, yeah, it's uh, incorrect to use inaccurate readings. Yeah, connect the ammeter in parallel could result in short circuit. Yeah, some of you I think did that in lab. And um, in the circums in the uh, setup where you have uh, the power supply you are working with has a built-in uh, protection circuit, and it's not so dangerous. But um, in other <laughs> situations, shorts can be dangerous. So. You do have to be careful. Um, it could also damage the ammeter if ammeter doesn't have something to protect itself in case of high currents. Okay, uh, last question here. In a given circuit, uh, yeah, the answer should be no. Let's see if <laughs> it answers no. <laughs> 
it's not yeah it's not straightforward um yeah part this given by yeah so um if you can kind of parse this yourself uh this is uh you know power is equal to i squared times r that's most useful when you know current and resistance power is equal to v squared over r that's most useful when you know voltage and uh, resistance or power is equal to uh wait um the, uh, there's one other formula, power is equal to uh, current times voltage, uh, which might be useful if you know uh, for power uh, output of a battery, if you know the current. Like the power supply you're using, it uh, gives you the current and voltage, so yeah, uh, in those cases. So if uh, voltage across the resistance kept constant, then yeah, so you can kind of look at either of these two formulas. According to this, increasing resistance will decrease power dissipation. If a current is kept, yeah, these are good answers. Uh, wow, and examples. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think that's a little bit off um, on a tangent. <laughs> that might not be relevant, but um, uh, otherwise, yeah, good answers. Um, so again, if uh, um, the tools like this is helping you learn, then great. Whatever is helping you learn physics, I have no objections to that. Um, uh, if you're using them to cut corners, please don't. Um, it, it'll come back to bite you somehow. I don't know how, but I do know. When you don't learn the things that you're supposed to, that, that does hurt you in the long term. So, 